All right. Well, hope you can hear me okay. Tell me if that fan is too loud, whoever's out there in YouTube land here. If you can hear that fan like really super loud, let me know and I'll turn it down. I don't use the AC in here when I'm sitting here by myself. So um, just want to make sure I'm coming in loud and clear and that I'm not, the fan's not whining in the background too loud for you all to be annoying. Erica. All right. Hope you're doing well. Can't hear it on my end. Okay, good. 14-6 window care. Sounds fine by Jason O'Brien. Jacob Yates is in the house. Joey Miller was first on. Joey gets the award for being first. I don't know what that award is, but he gets it, whatever it is. So anyway, we'll wait for some folks to get on. There's 14, 16. Here we go. We'll get them up here. And uh, actually, the last broadcast did really well. Lots of people listened. I mean, I, I don't really care either way. I'll do them either way. But I'm just glad that some people are benefiting from them and they're listening to them. Uh, the last one did well. So that's good. Kristen's here. Hope you and the babies are doing good, Kristen and Garrett. Um, and let's see here. So it looked like it did well uh, out there. A lot of folks listened to it. So that's good. And uh, we're getting some more folks on here. Um, I'm kind of debating how I'm going to do this as far as this format. You know, people have asked me to go live on Facebook. I don't like Facebook Live really that much. I could do it like, um, you know, extra. I could I could do it or whatever if I had to, uh, you know, as an extra camera. Authorized Mike, the authorized Mike. Hope you're doing well. And uh, I know I like YouTube Live better, so I'm going to keep doing it. But what I want to figure out, and I've got to think about this, I, I want to figure out, if I want to have regulated times instead of being, I do always get banned from Facebook, Kristen. That's right. Aaron, how's it going? Brother Aaron. Um, I want to figure out if I should do set times. And <laughs> if you want to get shut down, do it on Facebook. Yeah. I get buried here on, on YouTube. Nobody knows me, uh, which is fine. Um, but, Anyway, I, I, I'm wondering if I should do set times, maybe twice a week. I mean, I've thought about it. I can make it work to do it. I would like to do some different things. Like I would, I would like to add some things to it and make it more usable so people can see things better. I heard YouTube made another move against the awful hates. Yeah, I heard that too. Uh, it's probably only a matter of time. I think a lot of it has to do with how you craft the titles. So I think you have to craft the titles in an interesting format to where it doesn't really look like you're you're like burning down the house, so to speak, but but you're actually like talking about what you're doing. I, I don't know if that matters. I think some of it does a little bit, but whatever. So being being creative maybe with some of that um, is sad. Now, if I could figure out how to get all my traffic over to my website and develop my website and go live from my website and have a set time and do all that. You know, maybe in the future, I'll be able to do that. What I would like to do on here is I, I want to figure out if I should go like two times a week and, you know, or even more maybe, but maybe an hour at a time or so. I, I, I don't know yet. I There's plenty of things to talk about. In fact, I pumped out so much information for so many years that a lot of it I can update to current things, but I've done a lot of the groundwork for years, for 10 years of preaching, you know, and researching. I've done a lot of the groundwork already. So um, I can redo a lot of that stuff and it's not really redoing it, but teaching on it again up to current events and dealing with things. So you know, I, I might do something like that in the future. I might get, I, I'm going to continue to do these broadcasts, Lord willing, but I, I just, I don't know. I want to see how it's going to go, uh, but we'll see what happens. Aaron Marshall from the zoo. You're at the zoo, Aaron. You're at the zoo like a week ago. You hang out at the zoo a lot. It's kind of weird. What's going on with that? Anyway, um, 
Yeah, being allowed on YouTube will be an art form, that's sure. Uh, Redeemed in Christ, we need to make the most of the First Amendment while we still can. That's right. I believe the time is short. I believe you are correct, sir, in saying that. Uh, let's see. 14-6 window care. Who in the world is that? I don't know. Sometimes I wonder about these names. Austin J. Point. Point I. Point L. First time I've caught you a live show. All right. Andrea's here. Hope you're doing well. And your husband and your children. Kevin Rockwell. I'm new. Kevin, you're new. Boy, are you in for it, Kevin? That's right, Jason O'Brien. No one's going to stop us either way. We'll use another platform. We'll preach it in the air, we'll, uh, in the open air. We'll do all of it, whatever we have to. We'll preach the word. We'll continue on for the Lord. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I like doing them live. I, I, I do like doing them live. And I do like actually interacting with people. You always go live when I have to drive and can't participate in the chat. Yeah, don't participate in the chat. Just go live. Don't get yourself in trouble. Well, I can't help it, guys. I'm kind of busy at night. I've got a big family. So uh, six children, a beautiful wife, and a little puppy that wants attention. So I, I have to literally keep myself busy. Everybody's listening in the car. I hate it when I look at the screen and not the camera. I do that all the time. You can tell I'm not a professional. I am not a professional. Nor do I claim to be. Hey, the puppy's great, man. Boy, he's a feisty little sucker, though. He really is. Feisty little guy, man. His name is Buster. And boy, is he already in trouble. Yeah, normally you would be watching PMO right now, right? But he's I, I saw that. I, I texted Pastor Mike. He's not feeling well. Pray for him. No practice with transcripts. Yeah, I know. I don't have any transcripts. I don't know with that. Seven kiddos and a beautiful wife with a puppy also. That's good, Nick. Praise the Lord for that. That's good. Yep, yeah, pray for Pastor Hoggard. He's not feeling well today. He's kind of hurting. Um, let's see. Everybody's in the car, huh? Listening. Wow, that's funny. You know, we could talk a little bit about, about the news before I get into my topic, because I, I don't plan on being too long today, because I do have, I have some other things to do. But, um, you know, we we see the, the uh, Speaker of the House Politics is a show, by the way. War is a rich man's game where poor men die. But by the way, those World War II veterans are heroes and they were they were the last of the great generation and they did they did valiantly. So we ought to remember that. That those men fought and they 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 were good men. They had good character. You know, so don't don't forget that. I know about these modern day wars and the things that go on now, but they called that the last last great generation. And th those people fought. I mean, they they fought for what they believed was right. And. You know, they did valiantly. So anyway, praise God for that. But. Um, it's war is a sad thing. And and. Uh, during the midst of this, I, I, I did actually listen to President Trump's speech. And I have to say, what he said in his speech was good. Uh, I'm not fooled by the right-left paradigm. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not falling for anything. I, I know exactly what I'm, what I'm looking at. But I give credit to where tr credit's due. That was a good speech. And what he said was... What he said was... Um, was full of integrity and honor to those that that uh, did give their life. So anyway, uh, by the way, I heard Trump wants to ban suppressors. Yeah. Oh, let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about that. You know, when you were under Republican presidency, 
more gun control and more more uh, dangers to liberty happen. And I can prove this, by the way. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of this. Victoria, by the way, before I get to that, Victoria, I agree with you. Uh, his, his speech was inspiring, and I thought it was very respectful. Um, now, let me say this. Um, George W. Bush. George W. Bush passed the Patriot Act. George W. Bush passed the um, uh, all the 9-11 after, after 9-11, all of those things. He he passed all those, uh, the Patriot Act. Uh, help me out. I'm trying to think of the other one. What in the world was that other one called? I can't remember. Anyway, there was another one that he passed. Um, and the the sad thing is, is that was under a Republican presidency. NDAA, the, the NDAA that's right. Thank you. Uh, passed that too as well, which robs us Homeland Security. All these other things were passed and put into place uh, right after 9-11 to take our liberties away. And it worked. And now, during Obama's time, everybody gets vigilant and diligent and says, no, you're not going to do this. So no gun control passes. Nothing about gun control passes at all. And there's a fight and there's a war. But Trump gets in and Trump says, all right, I'm banning bump stocks. Because a thing, uh, a um, a shooting takes place. All right, bump stocks are banned. That's it. They're gone. Then another shooting takes place the other day, and he says, "Oh, suppressors. I don't like them. They're going to be gone." That's the way to chip away at your freedom. That's chipping away. I'm not surprised at that. I'm not surprised at that because I believe. I absolutely believe that government entities, uh, leaders of the free world, huh, free world, are controlled opposition. I believe the Jesuits control both sides of the election, whether Hillary was voted in or whether Trump was voted in. Both sides are controlled opposition. By the way, just so you understand, Scottish free right masonry is in the lap of Rome. Their headquarters are in Rome. Look it up. Okay? Look it up. They're controlled by the Jesuits through the different knights, through the different orders, and they're just working for the Pope. All of them are working for the Pope. So understand that. Even, by the way, when you look at a presidency in America, you've got to look at who the vice president is. When you start to look at that and you see who the vice president is, when, when you look at who the vice president is, then you know, okay, so when Barack Obama was president of the United States, there was a Jesuit right next to him. Who was that Jesuit? Joe Biden. Joe Biden was the was the um, handler of that. Hey, Pam Reynolds, I will say hi. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you on here. So Patriot Act was, was written by a Jesuit Georgetown professor. That's correct. That's correct, and it was all ready. So here's here's my point: uh, that these people, you're you're, they're never going to get to an act. Okay, let's go back a few years. Who was the guy that stood out? Who was the guy that stood the last president that stood out and said no? They said no to Rome, and they said no to the to the Federal Reserve. Who was that? Who was the last president that did that? Emphatically said that. JFK. JFK was the last president that said that. When JFK did that, what happened? Done. Dead. 
and the Jesuits did it along with the Masons, along with four other presidents, future or present or past, that were involved with the JFK assassination. And yes, the Jesuits did kill JFK. Absolutely, they did. So what's my point? My point is that you have controlled opposition in there, that there is opposition on both sides, but they are controlled. They're only going to go far as far as they're allowed. If you look at Donald Trump and you look at his history, do I think he, he, he genuinely loves America? Yeah, I think he does. I actually think he does love America. Um, where Obama hated America. He absolutely hated America. But Trump actually loves America. But he's only going to be able to go as far as they allow him to go. They're not going to allow him to go any farther than that. Just like Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, he presided over a huge national debt. Ronald Reagan also reinstituted relationships with the Vatican. Why is that? So all of these things took place and transpired. Oh, absolutely. I believe Alex Jones is controlled opposition. I absolutely believe that Trump uh, is. I don't think that Trump. I think Trump thinks outside of the box. I don't think he's like Pence. 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 Is. I think he's the real insurance policy. Because if Trump gets any JFK ideas in his mind, squeaky clean Pence is going to come in. That's the insurance. What was it with Reagan? Bush. Bush. George H. Bush. Right? He was the insurance policy. When Reagan got out of line, the guy, Bush had dinner with the family member, the guy that shot Reagan. <laughs> Think about that. Is that? No, it's not an accident. It's on purpose. So those are all conspiracies. No, those are all facts. Old man Bush was the head of the CIA. The man that shot the man that shot Reagan, the man that shot Reagan uh, was a family friend of Bush's. Some people say that one of his G-men actually shot him when he was going inside and hit him with the 22 three times. Oh, yeah. Old old man Bush. Yeah. Well, he was honored by everybody. I mean, they paraded his body around everywhere and and, you know, all that good stuff. So. So anyway, here's the thing. All these people, you say, Pastor, do you believe all these people are all together? Weird, because Pope and Reagan were both shot. Yeah. Well, that whole thing with the Pope. Yeah, that's another story altogether. But, yeah, that's another story altogether, anyway, for another time. But but here's the thing. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They're opposition. They're controlled. There's a Hegelian dialectic. The Jesuits are the masters of the Hegelian dialectic. What's my thought process on that? Well, when I see Nancy Pelosi, with whom I absolutely am annoyed, say that she wants to see Trump in prison, do I believe her? Not really. Do I believe it's all part of a show? Yeah, I do. Say, so give me one evidence, one piece of evidence that this is a show. Okay, here it is. During the election period, Trump had all the WWF wrestling fans. I mean, I mean, all the Trump supporters 
saying a phrase. Lock her up. Lock her up. Lock her up. The minute he won the election, the minute he won the election, what did he say? Oh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to hurt their family. I, I don't want to do anything to hurt their family. I just, I just want to let it go. I just want to move the country forward. Wait a minute. Why? I thought we were going to lock her up. Lock her. See, this is all, it's all a show. It's all a game. Most of it is a game. Now, sometimes you have to stick up for the narrative, though, for, for the principles that are being held up in the game. For instance, due process. Even though we know these people are all criminals, a lot of them are, all of them are wrong. Uh, all of them are working for the New World Order and things like that. We still have to hold up. Uh, truth needs to be defended. What's right needs to be defended. Does that make sense? So sometimes you say, well, yeah, but I mean, you can't do that to a president. You can't do that to, to so-and-so. You can't do that. Why? Well, because you hold up the narrative, the truth. You see, you hold up what the truth is no matter what. And that's kind of the, the catch-22 of it all. That's kind of what we get locked into, we get stuck into, is, is dealing with that. Um, right, exactly, authorized Mike. Take the guns first, the due process comes second. Yeah, that's not the way it works. Um, but all of this is theater, political theater. Why? Well, because I don't think anybody's going to get locked up besides the lackeys that do the things that are on the bottom that they get caught for all these issues and all these other things. And who knows what really happens to any of these people? We don't know. Oh, Hillary is way more wicked. I absolutely believe that. Yeah, lock her up, build the wall, lock her up, build the wall, lock her up, build the wall. And nothing happens. It is bread and circuses. That's right. Go back and listen to that sermon, bread and circuses. That's exactly what it is. It's political fodder. Now, are, are these people really evil? Yes. Yes. Do you believe the queen might eat baby's blood? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think that's possible. I Yeah, I, I think they're really creepy people. I think they're really creepy people. Do I think some of these people are, 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 are getting, these people are admitting to getting blood transfusions from young children. They're taking young children's blood to try to prolong their life. That's happening. That's happening like right now. And they're admitting it. Uh, they're doing things with stem cells. They're doing things with all of it. Why? They're looking for the fountain of youth. They're getting into, they're going to digitalize the fountain of youth. And I'm going to talk about that in another broadcast about mind reading and the Antichrist AI stuff. I'm going to get back into that a little bit. They use aborted babies in vaccines. Absolutely, they do. Yep. So, yeah, they are good at keeping people in. So, you know, I don't, you're not going to see a change. Look, they have managed to take three years check this out three years of a presidency two and a half years of a presidency and waste two and a half years throwing bones to the economy once in a while right and doing some things that are good like that some of the things are not worried about the national debt though and getting us into extreme amount of debt but they're they're good at throwing a bone to all those things but what do they manage to do? Nothing for the major things that matter. Nothing has changed. Everything is the same. Why? They've wasted it with what? Mueller's, uh, Mueller's report. And is the president guilty of this? And is this going to happen? And did that happen? And this is, the, is it this case? And is it that case? And all those other things, right? So what have we done for two and a half years? We've wasted a lot of time. Right? That's what's happened. So, um, these people, 
are the most wicked, vile people that you can imagine. Hillary Clinton, people like that. Hillary Clinton, very, very vile and wicked woman. And I want to go back to the, the, the start of this broadcast or my title here and my topic here today. The New World Order, the Jesuits, the Illuminati. Can these people be saved? You know, can these people that literally work for Satan and his kingdom for generation after generation after generation, can they be saved? These people that literally probably communicate with fallen angels, they probably they communicate with devils. These people that have seances, these people that have drank blood, these people that all these things. Can they be saved? You know, well, I want you to turn your Bible to second second chronicles open up your bible come on get ready turn your bible i have this nice little one see this it's a nice king james bible somebody bought this one for me nice leather bound a brother bought it for me man is it nice i really like this it's really little it's easy to get everywhere. But turn your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 33. I want to show you a man that was just as bad as those men, if not worse, openly worse. All right? And I want to show you the power of God. Are you ready? Let's go. 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years, by the way, 33. Isn't 33, is that that funny? He was wicked and rebellious, and he's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. So here's a man that did absolute evil in the sight of the Lord. His father was a good man. Hezekiah was a good man. He made some mistakes at the end, but he repented, but it was too late uh, for his son. His son was influenced by his mistakes. The last 15 years of his life, of Hezekiah's life, that God gave him life and gave extended his life 15 years. The last 15 years of his life, Manasseh was born. He didn't do very good. Good that last 15 years. The Bible says he rendered not according to the kindness that the Lord had showed him. So be careful how much years you, you ask for if you're not going to live right in them. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. And he reared up altars for Balaam and made groves and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. So uh, the Bohemian grove. Huh? The Bohemian Grove, he had the groves worshiping Baal. Yeah, he worshiped Baal. Also, he built altars in the house of the Lord, wherefore the Lord had said in Jerusalem, shall my name be forever. He actually built altars into the house of the Lord to Baal, to defile the sanctuary. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Those were valleys that were fires that were pictures of hell. And he had his children pass through the fire. He burned his children alive to Moloch. Now this guy is new world order. This guy was Illuminati. This guy was a Satanist. This guy was practicing Luciferianism. He was worshiping false gods. Now listen, pay attention, please. Also, he observed times. What does that mean? Fortune telling. Reading the stars. Observing times. Telling the future. And used enchantments. What are those? Spells. Using enchanted ob objects that have devils trapped inside of them to gain power and control. You listening? That's what he did. And used witchcraft. Look at this. Well, that's what they do. The Illuminati and those Jesuits and those New World Order, all those people, what do they do? They they use witchcraft, they serve Lucifer, they serve Baphomet, they 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 they, they sacrifice their babies, they do all those things and dealt with a familiar spirit. So he literally dealt with devils. 
and with wizards. I mean, this guy went from hanging out in the church house to hanging out with the witches, the wizards, the sorcerers, the false prophets, the or the uh, the the spirits. Um, I mean, he was like hanging out in the graveyard, grave sucking. Uh, he was Manasseh said, "Man, as holy as my father was, I'm gonna be the opposite. I'm gonna be more wicked than he was holy." And he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. He took a carved image and he put it in the Lord's house to bow down to it, to serve it. Neither will I anymore remove the foot of Israel from out of the land, which I have appointed for your fathers, so they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, to err and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. He was doing everything that you could possibly imagine that was evil. Everything that you could possibly imagine. More so than the heathens that were around him. I'm going to tell you something. There ain't nothing worse than a religious devil. There ain't nothing worse than a hard-hearted kid that grows up or a hard-hearted man that grows up around the gospel that goes to a gospel preaching church that doesn't give his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord, save your questions for the end and I'll answer them at the end, okay? Uh, and the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. So God went to them, but they would not listen. Wherefore, the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. Oh, you want to be like Babylon? You want to be a little witch? You want to act like a little sorcerer? You want to act like a little devil? Then I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you to Babylon. You want to find out what it's like to be in Babylon? You want to serve Satan? I'll send you there to his seat, to the spirit of Babylon. And you can go there. You want to play with devils? You want to play with demons? You want to play with familiar spirits? I'll send you there. I'll put you in prison there with those. But you know something? As, as wicked as he was, what did he do? Burned his children in the fire. Consulted familiar spirits. Uh, fortune told. Read the stars. Uh, you know, had wizards around him. All those things. Manasseh did all evil. But I want to show you something. I mean, I think everybody here can, can attest to the fact that Manasseh was pretty wicked. One of the most wicked. He was the wicked. Nobody did evil like Manasseh in Jerusalem. Now, Ahab was wicked, but that was in Israel. This was in Judah. But look at this. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him and was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. You know, some of these people may have grown up in a church. They may have got hooked up with the New World Order, the Illuminati. They may have generations of wickedness and evil in their lives. But God can save any of them. God can save them. Look at this. It says that God brought affliction upon him. What did he do? He turned to the God of the Bible. It says, now after this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gion in the valley, even the entering into the fish gate and compassed about Ophel and raised it up a very great height. 
says here, and he took away the strange, in verse 15, he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed there on peace offerings and thank offerings and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Says here in verse 18. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer unto his God and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord, God of Israel. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how God was entreated of him, and all his sin and his trespass in the places wherein he built high places and set up groves and graven images before he was humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in, the, in his own house. So Manasseh was a very evil man. He's a very wicked man. And the Lord saved Manasseh when Manasseh repented and turned from his sin. He was born again. He was saved. He was forgiven in that sense. I know it's a little different in the Old Testament than it was now. But he, it says that Manasseh knew that he was the Lord. It says here, it says here and he prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem, into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now, why is this important? Well, I believe it's important because if we're not careful, we'll follow conspiracies. We'll follow them out past the word of God. And we will look at these people and we'll say, you know what? These, these people can't be saved. These people, uh, you know, the President Trump and all these people, they can't be saved. But the Bible says... I would that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands, and that we're to pray for those that are in authority. The Bible commands us to do that. But I wonder how many people actually pray, how many Christians actually pray for these people in authority, like Obama and his family and Trump and his family and Biden and all these other wicked sinners that are out there. If, if, if we actually pray for them, that we want them to be saved. And if we believe that they can be saved. Now, men like Steven Anderson, they don't believe homosexuals can be saved. But when you look at the word of God. The Bible said for some of you. He said some of those effeminate men were saved. They were forgiven. They were saved. And they were in the church at Corinth serving the Lord. You say, Pastor, do you really believe that a witch like Hillary can be saved? You bet I do. You bet I believe a witch like Hillary can be saved. Sure, I believe that. Absolutely, I believe that. Don't you? Don't you believe God can save anyone? Don't you believe that it's in his power to save? Think about that. How much do, do we believe conspiracies and things like that more than we do the word of God? You know? We should be praying for these people. We should pray that they be saved. We don't pray for them enough. You know, we should. We really need to. They need our prayers. In fact, the Bible commands us to pray for them. Well, is Hillary any worse? Is Hillary any worse than than uh, the Manasseh? No. No. Look what Manasseh did. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord, right? more than all that were before him in, in Israel, in, Ju in Jerusalem. But God still brought him to repentance, and God can bring any man to repentance and, and belief in him. Look, exactly, look at Saul. Look at Saul who became Paul. Look at his life. If you think about Saul, he murdered the Lord's people. He murdered them. 
He dragged them in from cities all over the place and murdered them. Do you know that God glories in saving the hard cases? Do you know that? In the most hardest of hearts and the hardest cases, that God glories, God gets much glory for saving them. He gets much glory and he shows his power. Just like he raised up Paul. Why did he raise up Paul? To show forth his glory. To show forth what happened, what God could do with a life. Now, let me be a sort, let me try to be an encouragement to you here today and say this for other people that are in your life. There may be people in your life right now that are not living for God. Maybe they are saved, but they're backslidden. Maybe they're backslidden and they're away from God. And you think there's no way they're going to get right with God. There's no way they're going to come back. There's no way it's over. They're done. They're not going to come back. No. You've got to believe God. You've got to believe the same power that saved Saul and made him Paul is the same power that can save anyone. Anyone. Think about that. If Manasseh can be saved, if Manasseh can be born again, or saved for that time period, you know, I know it's a little different. They're not, they weren't sealed under the day of redemption like we are, but that was a different time. But if, if he could be, then so could anybody else. How about this? How about those that are backslidden? Is God able? Well, Hebrews chapter he, Hebrews chapter 12 talks about the chastening of the Lord. And when somebody is chastened of God, that God brings them back. That God, God instructs them and he teaches them and he corrects them, his sons and his daughters. And God is able to chasten them. God is able to humble them. God is able to bring them back. And we shouldn't look at people like the case is hopeless, that God can't, that, that, that nothing's ever going to change. But we ought to pray in faith that the Lord will do a mighty work. That they'll be saved or they'll be recovered from their error. And it's our responsibility to help them. If there are those out there that we know that are, that are backslid and they're away from God, that we try to call them to repentance or recover them from their errors so they would serve the true and living God. So remember that God's mercy is not, God's hand is not slack. His arm is not shortened that he cannot save. Right? The Bible says, where he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. That's Jesus. And he has the power to intercede. So don't give up on your friends. Be not weary in well-doing. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your backslidden husband, your backslidden wife, your backslidden friends, or your lost family members. Don't give up on them. God is able to save them. You got to keep preaching the gospel, keep living for the Lord, keep standing for the faith. Amen. Okay. Now, anybody have any questions here? Anybody at all? Amen. That's right. You, we, we are not allowed to give up, right? You know, I want to preach another message sometime called wait but don't faint. And uh, maybe I will sometime, but that, that'll be a sermon probably. But that's what you and I are commanded to do. We're commanded to wait, not to faint, but to wait. God's good. God has the power to save. God has the power to bring back. All right.
Let's see. I thought I saw a question somebody asked. I have lots of questions, but not about this topic necessarily. Well, it doesn't have to be about this topic, Catherine, as long as it's not way off the wall or anything crazy that isn't proper to ask in a setting like this, then I don't have a problem with that. Somebody asked me if, if people could sell their soul to the devil. I don't see that in the scripture as far as a legal thing, because honestly, the Bible says the devil already has it. The devil already has the, the Bible says that the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience is already in them. Okay, let me get rid of the 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 troll. Go back under the bridge. We'll see you later. My husband and I have been listening to you for over a year now, and we have a 10-month-old little boy. Do you have any good recommendations to read to him? Oh, well, that's that's a good question. Um, well, at 10 months old, I would just read that you could just read the Bible to him. You know, um, I would just just reading to children, period, is good for them. It's very good for them. I am post-trib, but my mother is pre-trib. I see biblical evidence for both. I don't believe it's worth arguing about, but I would like to know what you believe Enoch was. Well, I'm not sure I understand your question. Enoch was a prophet. Uh, he preached. He was a preacher. And then Enoch wa walked into heaven. He was not for God took him. Um, I don't understand the question, I guess. So you'd have to kind of rephrase that a little bit for me. <laughs> Pastor is just is using just for men a sin. I don't know what just for men is. Is that like something for your hair? I'm not sure what that is. Oh, was Enoch raptured? Um, it was a picture of it. Enoch was a picture of the translation. So, yeah, I think he'd be a picture of it. Okay, Catherine, you asked a question. Uh, also, we have heard you say that you are raising your son differently than your daughter. Uh, your daughters. I have daughters. Five. Daughter, can you give me some examples of that, please? Yes, here's some examples of that. Okay, um, here here's some here's some examples. Um, my son will be will be trained to be out in the world and work as a man and function as a man in the world around other men so he will learn how to work around other men he 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 will learn he will learn how to um deal with other men and you know how to work with them so he'll be trained like that he'll also be trained to be more dependent um more independent i should say more independent to learn to be a man to learn to you know, pay, pay bills and, and take care of his responsibilities. And we does something wrong that he'll have to learn to take care of it. Um, in that sense, he'll learn to be a provider. He'll learn to be a leader. He'll learn to be bold. He'll learn to be, um, assertive when necessary. Okay. He'll, he'll learn to be that where my daughters will learn to be submissive to their father, submissive to a husband someday. They will learn to take care of the home. They will learn to be a keeper at home. They will learn to, to cook and to clean and to care for a husband and to nurture children and to help raise children and to help uh, take care of them. So the, the, different, the focus is different. They will learn to be more dependent on a husband. And on a father. And they will not make decisions like a son or a man will. 
The Bible talks about that in the Old Testament in Numbers, I believe it's chapter 20, talks about how the daughter was under her husband or under her father's uh, uh, leadership. And he and if she made a vow, he could disannual that vow. If a wife made a vow, the husband, when he heard it, could disannual that vow. Wasn't so for a son. It was different. The son was a man and he was learning to be a man and he had to make decisions. He was going off to learn a trade or a career. My son will learn a trade or a career and he will learn to do those things. That's the difference. Okay. Let's see. Let me back up here. Oh, Jesse, don't worry about going gray. Look at me, man. I'm going gray. I'm getting, I'm getting old. People start listening to you when you get old anyway. Um, nobody listens to you when you're young. Oh, you were making fun of me. That's what you were doing. Okay. I thought I was wondering if that was a joke, but I wasn't sure. Uh, let me back up. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico, and thanks for your videos. I was able to find a church on Brother Finney's website, Liberty Baptist Church. The only thing is that they're pre-trib. Should I still go to attend? Sure. I, I would still go there. I wouldn't let uh, the timing of the rapture be an issue uh, for me to go to a church or not to go to a church in that sense. I would just suffer through it and just deal with it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I hope I didn't miss any. Okay, I don't think I did. Okay, let me scroll down. Give me a second. Do you believe that the book of Enoch... Do you believe the book of Enoch is biblically endorsed? Or extra biblical. No, the book of Enoch is heresy. Go listen to my two videos on the book of Enoch. You will see them both. They're on my YouTube page. Listen to them. They'll help you. The book of Enoch is trash. Uh, what is. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's see. It's not biblically endorsed. The book of Enoch is not biblically endorsed. Absolutely not. The Bible never says that Enoch wrote anything. It says Enoch said something. It does not say he wrote it. The Bible's clear when somebody wrote something. It says it in the word of God all over it. When it was written, it says it. Uh, what do you do if your wife is backslidden and finds everything you do? Hey. Pray. Uh, do, do you think a clone can be saved? No, I don't think they're humans. Can you touch on children and the age of accountability when a child is ready for repentance? Are children safe in the Lord? I, Kevin, I believe, according to the scriptures, that children are safe in the Lord. Uh, the Bible talks about that promised land they were going to enter into. The little ones were not destroyed, uh, but the others bore, bore the reproach of it. Um, I, David said that he, that his son could not come to him, but he would go to him someday. And he was a baby. So, uh, I, I believe there's a lot of scripture that Romans alludes to the fact that the children, uh, as well are protected. What is the age of accountability? It's different with everyone. Uh, it's different with every child. Do, do I think there's a lot of seven and eight year olds that have died in hell? No. I actually don't because I don't think a lot of them would understand sin that well. Most of them don't understand the accountability uh, for sin. Most of them don't until they're older uh, understand that. So people may disagree, but that's that's OK. Um, I say just preach the word to them, pray and let God deal with their hearts. Uh, let's see. Uh, you. You're welcome, uh, Catherine. Let's see. Lady Techno, he did a couple of videos. The, oh, Book of Enoch. Okay, you, you were answering that for her. Okay. I can't find a good church, says Moon Pie. I can't say that. That's so crazy. Anyway, <laughs> I can't find a good church in my area. I wish you were my pastor. Oh, that's not a question. Well, praise the Lord. Um, I, I mean, I'm not praise the Lord that you can't find a church, but thank you for saying that. But I... I do pray that you do find a church, okay? I really want people to be in church. I don't want this to be a substitute for their church. I never do want to do that. 
I want you to go to a local New Testament church, have the same blessings that the people in this church have as we we're together all day Sunday from the time we get here. And I mean, man, sometimes I leave and they're still here, but we're here sometimes till eight o'clock at night. Some people nine o'clock at night. Sometimes they've been here till 11 o'clock at night. Uh, so praise the Lord for that. We have such a, a good church family uh, that loves each other in the Lord. And it's a blessing. Okay. Are there still messengers from God? Yes. I'm a messenger from God. I have a message that God has given me. Now, is it a direct revelation? No, the, the revelation is here in the scriptures. But I do preach the word of God. If I'm preaching this, I'm giving you a message from God. I'm not an angel in that sense. I'm a minister, okay? But I wouldn't say like a messenger as in like with the divine, you know, prophecy in my mouth of what's going to happen like an angel was. But, but I believe that God does have messengers. There is preachers. They're sent. How shall they preach except they be sent? Right? So yes, in that sense, yes. Do messengers still warn of last days in our mouthpieces for God? Do messengers still warn? Yes. Well, they do. But they, they warn what the scriptures say. Okay? All right. King James Version. Train up a child in the way he should go when he's old and will not depart from it. As long as they're preaching the King James Bible, their prophets, their messengers have got right. Zach Wilson, are you really offended by people who say that's so gay? Or do you not think it's a big deal? No, I'm not offended by that. Because a lot of times it is gay, what people say. Um, wow. Uh, let's see. Was the Book of Enoch in the Dead Sea Scrolls? I'm not for sure, but I know it's not in the King James Bible. It's not part of the text, and it's not divine authority. Can't find a church in Raleigh, North Carolina. Well, there's a lot of good churches in North Carolina, I believe, or a lot of old-fashioned churches, so try to look for those. What do you think of Mike and Debbie Pearl? I'm not a huge fan of Mike and Debbie Pearl. Um, I don't like some of their techniques. They, I don't know. I'm sorry. There's just something about them I don't like. It just. And David Cloud, wayoflife.org, David Cloud has a good section on Mike and Debbie Pearl. So go check that out, wayoflife.org, type in Mike. Mike and Debbie Pearl, and there's to try to teach them. I thought that was so weird. I, that's to me, that's so absolutely unbiblical. Um, it's just strange. Anyway, uh, let's see. All right, are you KJV? Absolutely. I went to four different churches Sunday. Only one used the King James Bible, says Jason Stockman. They use, but they spoke Korean. I'm in Glendale, California. Do you know of any good churches in my area? Jason, check wayoflife.org. That's the best I can tell you. I'm, I'm not familiar with that area. Uh, you're welcome, Wax Cat. Hope you're doing well. Is it okay? I would stay away from the book of Enoch. I would stay in your Bible. I think Enoch's a very dangerous book. It gets into... S the teachings are Kabbalistic. Go watch those two videos. Please, go watch the two videos that I did on it. Okay, MC asked me, Pastor, do you consider yourself a dispensationalist? Also, I found a KJV church that is dispensational pre-trib. Do you see a problem with dispensational doctrine? Okay, well, this is a big one. So let me let me let me tackle this. Am I a dispensationalist? For lack of a better term, yes. I do believe that God dealt differently, dispensed things and dealt differently with different people. Do so, but but to qualify that, I think everybody is. If if we take the traditional term of that, but to be clear, I do not believe in other ways of salvation. I do not believe in other gospels. I do not believe in the chopping up of the scriptures the way that dispensational men like Clarence Larkin, Peter Ruckman, and all those other men do. I do not agree with that. So I believe in a very moderate view of explaining the scriptures. And there is, there's a lot of truth to dispensationalism in that sense. 
but I do not agree. I do not agree with uh, the chopping up of the Bible the way that they do uh, and the changing of um, salvation and the different gospels. I do not believe in that. Um, so, and if I had to go to a church with that, yes, I would. Um, unless they're preaching like six different gospels and five different gospels and Peter preached a different gospel than Paul did. And this is a different gospel and this is different and that's different and stuff like that. If you're, if they're preaching that two different gospels, I wouldn't go there. I, I wouldn't, that's, that's just me. I, I wouldn't do that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that's scriptural. Peter and Paul preach the same gospel. That's why Paul, that's why Paul uh, went to Peter and said, you're wrong, Peter. You're adding works to the gospel. Now, why would he say that? It was a different gospel. It's nonsense. When the, the Bible talks about the gospel, the circumcision was committed unto Peter. All it's saying is that Peter preached to Jews. Paul preached to Gentiles. Voila. Wow. Wasn't that hard? Anyway. Um, I think the ley lines are are like, I think it's satanic occultism is what I think it is. A friend gave us their books and they have seemed questionable. Yeah, I, I wouldn't read those. I'd stay away from those. I, I just don't, I don't endorse them. That doesn't mean anything to most people because I'm nobody anyway, but I'd stay away from you. Ask my opinion, I'll give it to you. I believe it's if there if it's an English speaking church it doesn't use a King James Bible I would not go there. See my series or see my sermons on the NIV. I have a sermon that I need to bring to you guys. I got to pull it down. I got to get it over there from the conference that I did in dealing with that and I, I just boffem at Bible translations. I got to get that over to you guys. I will. So yes, read the King James Bible. Uh, don't go to a church that doesn't use the King James Bible. Just stay away from it. You don't need it. When was the last time you voted? Uh, about a year ago, I voted in a local elections. Um, but I will, I didn't vote for presidents and all that kind of stuff. Do you believe you should be, do you believe you could be deceived in the prophecy era? Well, here's the thing, Kroiki or whatever your name is. I know you're trying to set me up because you believe in, in preterism and all that kind of stuff. I'm not into arguing about that. I, I'm not going to argue prophecy with you. Um, and and I, I'm not going to have you disrespect me like that. If, if, if you want to, if you want to have a conversation with me in private, you most certainly could have, but trying to disrespect me like that on this channel in front of everybody else, it shows you have poor integrity, absolutely poor integrity. In fact, I think you're a coward for doing that. If you'd have been kind and you'd have came to me in private, we could have had a discussion about that. We could have discussed that. We could have, we could have aired out our differences when it comes to that. But to call me deceived and to try to put that out in front of everybody and try to make that like that, that's just so ridiculously immature. It shows that you are so fixated on one doctrine. And that's why men like you really never do anything for God. They really don't. When you find people, listen to me, people, please listen to me very clearly. When you find people like the flat earth people and people that are stuck on one doctrine, that's all they can do. They never really profit anyone. They're like, they're like a one, they're like Milli Vanilli. They're a one hit wonder. That's what they are. And then they're gone and they can't do anything and they never really do anything for God because they're so fixated on one thing. They're so immature about it that they can't develop any theological arguments or discussions or they can't grow spiritually in the word of God because they think they have all the answers. And if you're wrong about that one thing in their eyes, then everything else is done. And I've got to I got to make that the most important issue in the entire world. And, and try to do it's just so ridiculous I just I, I I really disdain that spirit because I almost got caught up in it so I know what it's like and I got burned by it and it's a bad spirit to have get your heart right with God there's more important things than the timing of the rapture and prophecy and things like that it's called the gospel of Jesus Christ it's called warning sinners that are on their way to hell and it's called bearing fruit and trying to be profitable to the people of God out there not nitpicking every single little thing that you can come up with and it's your like one hit wonder. It's sad. It really is. I'm sorry, but you can go do it somewhere else. You're just not gonna do it here. 
All right. Only one gospel, only one Messiah. Amen. Uh, let's see. Is the Torah observance still good today? No, it's not. Uh, no one observes the Torah today and no one follows the law today. We needed grace by Jesus Christ because he fulfilled the law. Moses was the types and shadows. Moses couldn't get you to the promised land. Moses could bring you up to Christ, but Christ is the only fulfillment of the law. Grace fulfills the law. That's why grace is greater than the law. So you do not believe in rightly dividing with a literal sword. Are you asking me to take a Bible out and chop it up into different pieces? Do you think being 31 and never married because I know what I want and haven't found a man who is a Christian or who is a leader, I will eventually have the life I desire with kids and husband traditionally? Well, I'm not a prophet in that sense, so I can't tell the future, but I believe that it's right for you to wait on the Lord and be faithful to God. Nope, I'm not pre-trib, William, but I'm not here to argue about it either. So... Do you understand the ancient Jewish wedding? Yes, I do understand the ancient Jewish wedding. I've preached on it. Most of dispensational teachers preach anything outside of Paul is for the Jews and tribulation saints. Yeah, I don't believe that. Um, I mean, I don't preach that. The law is good, but if you try to keep it for salvation, you are a debtor to the entire law. Amen. Friends have questioned our stance on women wearing skirts and dresses and say that because we don't keep all Old Testament laws, we shouldn't pick and choose. How do we answer them? Well, Catherine, because God has not changed male and female. God made a woman to be feminine. God made a man to be masculine. God made a woman to have long hair. I don't know what that length is for every woman. It's different. And God made a man to have short hair. And nature teaches those things. And and mixing fibers and all of those things were given as a ceremonial law to the Jews. But moral laws have never been rescinded. God expects us to still be morally pure, holy, righteous. The Bible says the woman is supposed to be shamefaced with sobriety. She's supposed to be meek and she's supposed to be modest. So that's how you answer them. And the reason why they're saying that is that because they're convicted, because they're running around in tight pants and they're half naked and they don't like the fact that you're not doing that. William, I'm not going to explain the whole bridegroom metaphor and the bride metaphor in the Bible. I'm not going to explain that when I have clear teaching, when I have absolute clear teaching from second Thessalonians, that the man of that the falling away must take place and the man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. But I'm not here to argue about it, Willie. I'm not going to argue. The Bible says for one another with these words, not give up for a battle to death with spears and swords and kill each other about it. I'm not going to do that. You know, if you believe that it's a pre-trib rapture, amen. Guess what? If it is and I'm wrong, then I'm going to. So it ain't going to change nothing, Willie. Ain't gonna, William, it ain't going to change nothing at all from that standpoint. Okay. Your path is on you. Don't focus so much on others, my brothers. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, it ends up in sowing discord instead of coming together in Messiah. Uh, does Jesus appear in the Old Testament? Sure does. Everywhere in the Old Testament. Many, many uh, Christophanies, uh, pre-incarnate appearances of Christ in the Old Testament. I could, I would say study it out. Bye, William. You didn't prove any pre-tribulation rapture. By the way, let me say this to you. Are you ready? Listen to me. I want to show you something. I'm not mad at him. He's mad at me. Here's why he's mad at me. He's trying to take a picture of something and produce solid doctrine from a simple picture. It's like taking all of your doctrine from a parable and saying, this is my doctrine of salvation because this parable says this. In, but he ignores clear teaching from the word of God. That's not what parables are for. Parables taught one lesson primarily. Most of them were false converts. That's the message of the parables all the way through is about false conversions and those that aren't saved. That's most of what is there. Most of what is there. Not all, but most. Now, he's mad because I don't want to explain the Jewish metaphor. He, does, he probably thinks that I don't understand the train that comes through when the bridegroom, when the bridegroom comes back to pick up the bride and all that. I, I, I've preached on it. Okay. I, I know what it is. But it isn't applicable 
to the timing of the rapture. Not what he's saying it is anyway. Because I could explain it very simply by 2 Thessalonians. The falling away takes place. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the sixth seal breaks. All those things have to take place. So anyway, William can go. That's okay. Hello, Tanya. Hope you're doing well and your daughter. The rapture is not a prerequisite to salvation. Just be ready for the Lord's return. Amen. I agree. Thanks for saying that I needed to hear, but being a single female isn't fulfilling. Well, it is fulfilling if you are fulfilling your ministry. You have a ministry as a single female in the Lord's church, and that's to serve the Lord with a willing heart and to give yourselves and to help others and to prepare for marriage that way. So if you're doing that, you'll be fulfilled. You just wait on the Lord. Get your contentment from God. Let's see. Get glad to catch my first. Wow, there's like 80 people on here. That's crazy. Um, I'm a will millennialist. The rapture will happen. Susie, that's funny. Um, and I agree. Um, Dan and Kate Adkinson. Well, how'd you hear about us, Dan and Kate Adkinson? Can a person really be saved if they show no fruit? and fall back into sin. Well, here's what I would say to you. If they have no fruit, then no, they're not saved. But just because you don't see it, we're not a perfect judge. We got to be careful about that. So if they have no fruit and they go back into the world, then they're probably one of the three grounds. That with Anon, they receive the word with joy and excitement and everything else, and then they fall away. Uh, what separates you from Steven Anderson because his view that LGBTs should be killed and can't be saved? Zach. Well, Zach, here's, here's the difference between me and Steven Anderson. I believe in repentance. He does not. So I know what biblical salvation is. I believe in biblical repentance and faith in Christ. Um, let's see. What else would be a major difference? Well, the homosexual thing. I don't hate Obama. I don't want him to die. I wanted to be saved. Dies and goes to hell. I don't. I don't want these people to die. I don't wish death upon them. Okay. Um, I don't believe in his one, two, three, repeat after me prayer stuff that he does with people and pronounces them all saved in his soul winning marathons across the whole country like Jack Hiles did. I I don't agree with that. Well, Piper's fun. That's nice to say. Thank you. I'm, I'm praise the Lord that we've been a blessing to you. Uh, why were the, this is a good question. True seeker asked this question. Why were the Nazarites permitted to grow out their hair? Because it was a, it was a, it was a vow and it was a shame. Okay. So they, they, they were bearing the reproach. That long hair was a reproach that they were bearing with their vow. Okay. That's what that was for. And that's why they had it. Hey, Jesse, it's good to, good to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. And I, I know you're, you, you had some cancer you're battling. Please everybody pray for Jesse. He's been battling cancer. So please be with him and help him. Uh, pray the Lord would help him with that. And, um, that he'd be strengthened. Let's see. Right. And that's why Stephen Anderson has to have the doctrine about homosexuals not being saved because he doesn't believe in repentance. What would be an example of a saved person having fruit, but nobody sees it, or it seems their bad fruit overshadows their good fruit? Well, you know, again, MC, we can't be a perfect, we can't be a perfect um, judge. But what we can do is say this, what direction are they headed in? 
And let me say this. If you're dealing with somebody that shows no fruit, you can tell them that. There's nothing in the Bible that says don't tell them that. No, you're to warn them in love and not suffer sin upon them. So you tell them, look, brother or sister, you, you don't show any fruit of salvation. I'm concerned for you. After you've prayed for them, by the way, not in some pharisaical, I want to point my finger and make this person feel bad because they Dorito chips and I don't believe in eating them or something stupid like that. Or they went to a fair or they went somewhere and you don't think they're saved now. No, I'm talking about their direction of life. If you really care for their soul, if you really care about them, pray about it and then go talk to them and take the Bible and say, look, brother, sister, I'm concerned for you. I'm concerned for you. I don't see fruit in your life. And I, and I, and are you saved? Do you know you're saved? Um, you got to start living for God. You're in trouble with the Lord, you know, things like that. And then show them from the Bible. Zach Wilson, the only place for you is the lake of fire if you don't repent. If you're a queer, you're going to die and go to hell. You're going to die and go to hell. And except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So you got to repent and believe the gospel. You got to turn from your wicked sin. I'm not Stephen Anderson. I believe you can be forgiven of your sins. That doesn't mean I think that your sin is any less vile before God and disgusting and God hates it. And except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. You got to believe the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ. You need your sins forgiven. May God smite your heart that you turn to him and believe the gospel before it's too late for your soul. Because God's going to require your soul of you. There's going to come one day when the laughs are going to be over, the jokes are going to be over, and there's no more games. And you're going to stand and you're going to be drawing your last breath on this earth. MC, no, it's not possible to be sealed and still willingly fall away. No, I don't believe so. Not at all. Not at all. I don't believe that's in the scriptures anywhere. Yeah, I hope to, I, I hope you get saved, Zach. You may be making fun of me and all this kind of stuff, but I'm not mad at you. If you're going to me, I don't care. People make fun of me my whole life. I don't care. But I do want you to be saved. I don't hate you. I want you to get saved before you go to hell. Michael, that's the same thing. You said Stephen Anderson doesn't believe didn't believe, don't believe homosexuals can't be forgiven for their sins. He believes that homosexuals will never believe in the Lord because God has given them over. Right. But that's not his choice to make. You don't get to say who's reprobate and who's not. You don't get to do that. So you preach the word to them. Nick Baker. Thank you, pastor. I thank God for you and your preaching has helped me and God led me to your channel on sermon audio. Amen. How long ago, Nick? How long ago? Uh, Mm, that's sad. By the way, when a king puts a seal on something, it can't be broken. You understand that? When the Bible used that term seal, that was a legal term. It was a king's seal. Can't be broken. You can't break it. It ain't your seal. Amen. Anyway, what do you? How do you feel about Charles Lawson, a uh, Pastor Lawson? I think he preaches a lot of good stuff. I haven't listened to a lot of it, but I'm sure it's really good. And I, I've seen some of his topics; looks really good. So, true to God for life. I want to thank God, uh, or thank you, Pastor. Uh, I've been listening to you since you put out the Sports Idol interview. Well, it's a long time ago, maybe five, six years ago. Praise the Lord. I'm glad it's a help to you. Amen. Worthy is the lamb. He's to be praised. Give him all the glory. Uh, let's see. By the way, um, 
Zach, you don't need a church. You need Jesus. And then you can, then you could be received in the church. You need Jesus. What is my view on a smoking reborn Christian? You mean like they're smoking? <laughs> There's, they're smoking cigarettes and they're reborn. Um, you mean a born again Christian smoking cigarettes? I think they're wrong. I think she should quit doing it. Um, I think it's going to destroy their lungs. It's bad. They shouldn't do it. Um, they should quit. It's a vice. Well, that's right. It says we're sealed. You're welcome, MC. I, I hope that helps. Uh, what is your view? Yeah, okay. Preaching on porn, you brought also a lot of truth to my eyes about it, especially the social anxiety part. I didn't know the damage it does. Yep, does a lot of damage. Sad thing. of uh, You can go listen to those pornography sermons, three or four of them. And, and uh, they'll help anybody who's trapped into that understand the issues of it. And to warn others not to get into it. I don't know what Chantex is, but... Yeah, got to quit smoking. It's bad for you. Uh, it causes heart disease. It's really awful for you. I have, I've had family members die of emphysema and all that. It's just terrible. Don't don't die of that. Yeah, yoga is bad too. That's right. Absolutely. Vaping has helped me a lot though. Still not the answer. I don't know what the difference is, to be honest with you. Let me tell you how I quit smoking. I threw him away. Well, Zach, you need to turn to the Lord and he'll he'll deliver you from all that. No, I don't think CBD is bad. That oil is good for people. It helps them. Yeah, yoga is kundalini. It's wicked. What's your stance on God's sovereignty? I believe God's sovereign. <laughs> I absolutely believe God's sovereign. Truth Seeker said, I have a feeling that many Christians will be persecuted at gay pride events like never before this year for spreading the gospel and the media will warp it into hate speech. Well, I intend to be at some events. I'm going to be preaching there. That's right. No such thing as a gay Christian. That's right. You're either delivered or you're not. No, Nick, LGBT, uh, Christians do not support LGBT. Yeah, Nick's going to get punted out of here. Boom. Bye, Nick. I can't, these comments come so fast, I didn't even see what he said, really. Okay. Why is the Jezebel Serpent allowed to run rampant in some of the institutionalized churches today? Well, that's because pastors haven't stood up and, and done what they were supposed to do. Um, and preach that Jezebel spirit out of there. And they've institutionalized that Jezebel spirit by their feminist movement inside the churches, having women speak in assemblies, uh, letting women pray, letting do all that, that kind of stuff in the assemblies with men 
in mixed company, letting them teach the Bible, all that kind of stuff, and letting them kind of run the show and being afraid of women. That's what happened. Having their women's meetings and their and their 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 big women's meetings that really don't teach anything that they really need to know. Yeah, I have heard about the Queen James Bible. Yep. Yeah, I heard about the YouTube purge. I did actually hear about that. My goodness, it's almost three o'clock. I got to get off here. Um, I better go. Uh, I've got stuff to do today and I got to get moving. But um, anyway, it was good. Hope I we answered some questions there and uh, took some time with you all. I hope you all have a good day and serve the Lord and be faithful to God today. I have no idea what that is. Um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't have a set time. Uh, hey, Samuel Hall, hope you're doing well. Um, and yeah, I don't have a set time yet for another one. I, I, I need to think about that. Can a saved person still have addictions? I think they're going to have, I think that sometimes casting down some things takes some time in a saved person's life, but they shouldn't be controlled by those things. They're not walking in the spirit like they should. Anyway, thank you all and uh, have a good a good afternoon and a good evening. And maybe we'll be back again by the end of the week. I'm not sure. I'm going to go out preaching on Saturday somewhere uh, and uh, go preach on the streets. So I'm looking forward to that. I have no idea what in the world that is. Boy, I have to hide a lot of weirdos. Anyway, so have a good day, everyone. God bless you all. Maybe I'll go live out on the street. I might do that. I might go live out on the street while we're preaching. So we'll see how that goes. I actually want to go live at one of those at one of those pride events, maybe. Might do that. Might do that. Maybe you need to. You just have to pray for our safety. It gets kind of crazy out there. Anyway, talk to you later.